Hey gang, Scott here. One of the best features, in my opinion, of Photo Raw 2025 is depth masks. Uh, these are uh, very, very cool. Anything that opens up creativity with uh, selecting certain areas of a photo so you can do specialized treatments, you know, that just makes me feel all warm and cozy inside. Depth masks is one of those things. So I'm going to show you how they work, how you work with them, the controls, and a few examples of depth masks in action. Real quick, if you are thinking about adding on one to your toolkit, upgrading to Photo Raw 2025, any of the other on one tools, check the show notes. I have an offer code there. Save you money, give me a little support so I can do more videos like this. So, first off, depth masks. Wait, what are they? Well, uh, think of when you are capturing something with your photo, and often we'll work with you know depth of field, we'll change aperture to have you know either a soft background. Uh, you know, a uh, a crisp background. How much depth do you want in the photo? And the 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 world is three D, right? There are things that are closer to the camera. There are things that are farther away. And a depth mask uses some really nifty, you know, smarts, you know, AI to look at a photo, understand what's in it, and determine which things are closer to the camera and which things are farther away. And what's really impressive about depth masks in Photo Raw is the camera you're capturing with, it doesn't need to have a depth mask or depth understanding. Like, you know, if you're capturing with an iPhone and using the portrait mode, for example, there's some additional metadata that gets put into the photo to you know coach any software that's reading it what things are closer what things are farther away depth masks in photo raw you actually don't need that and uh, the examples i'm going to show you in this video they were all captured with these cameras right here about eight years old sony a7r2s they have no idea what a what depth you know perception is you know beyond the the, the classic you know aperture and what things are, are crisp or soft. So uh, that's what a depth mask is, and you can tap into that pretty creatively because now think about I want to treat certain things in the foreground or things that are in the midground or in the background as opposed to doing something maybe with super select or you know more manual masking tools. You can take a look at a depth mask to have the AI help you figure that out. And uh, as you'll see, we're going to work visually with this. Uh, so let's uh, let's first look at where do we find depth masks in Photo Raw. You'll find the depth mask controls anywhere that you have masking in Photo Raw. That can be on individual filters, it can be on layers, anywhere that you can mask, you have the option to use a depth mask. Let's add a filter to the stack here, dynamic contrast. You've seen my stuff, you know it's one of my favorites. I'll click the masking icon, and uh, I have the, the floating the floating mask properties here. Yours might be docked up in the uh, in the left hand, sorry, right hand side there. But notice down on the bottom of the controls, we have this new one here, depth mask. This little this little guy right there, and when you click on a depth mask, I am always going to advise visualizing it. You can see what it did, and by default, it's finding things that are in the foreground and masking away from the background. Remember the whole mask mantra, you know, white reveals, black conceals. So by default, the depth mask is identifying things in the foreground. But then the other controls that you have, levels, window, of course density, you know, density works like how you'd expect, as does feather, right? Those things are the same. But the levels and the window, just like you would use it with luminosity masks, you can use it with depth masks to change, you know, how far into the background is it going? Or how close to the foreground will it go? Do you want to eliminate parts of the foreground? Or, you know, uh, extend or right, eliminate parts of the background? You know, so the window, you're here I'm shrinking the window, right? The thing between the two points, I'm shrinking the window so that I'm affecting fewer things. And then with the levels, I'm adjusting, well, where, uh, where do I want the depth to fall off or how close do I want it to be to the camera? And again, uh, let me turn off that view. This is a photo where, okay, fine. Uh, you can tell I took it at a shallower depth of field, but these things are obviously very close to the lens. These are very far away, but it was captured with a camera that doesn't have an understanding of depth in the sense that that type of metadata isn't in my raw file. The software 
Photo Raw, the AI, it's figuring all the things out for us. Uh, so, um, you know, so great. That's how Depth Mask works. Those are the controls. Let's go through a few examples of how you can use this to selectively apply adjustments to your photos. Because it's selective adjustments that really bring out the full character of a photo. So uh, let's continue with this one here. So let's get that mask control back up there and we will visualize the mask. I'm working with the depth mask. And here I definitely want to target the foreground. And I don't even want any of this, uh, you see this like soft gray that's in uh, the relatively close midground. I don't even want that. I want to apply this dynamic contrast just to this foreground area. So as you saw before, as I, as I played with things like the window, notice that's shrinking away, right? That window in the background, it's disappearing, it's disappearing, and I still have this very nice level of fall off. The brightest mask part, the brightest white, is on my most prominent subject. And then there are nice variations of you know, middle gray, which means partial strength of this uh, dynamic contrast. So I'm going to get the, the, the main subject will really pop with extra contrast in that detail, some here and then it disappears into the distance and maybe for just a little bit of natural look I'll, I'll, I'll fade that off kind of that, you know what, I'm gonna stick with this we can always play with this part later but when I'm creating the depth mask I'm working like this I'm working visually so I can see what am I affecting and what am I not and then I'll turn off the mask view and then I can play with the sliders and you can see if I take dynamic contrast to next to zero the rocks are what they were, and I push it forward. And maybe even for this one, we'll open up the styles. I'll hit surreal so you can really see there's that big jump, right? Before and after. And actually, surreal is pretty good here, but I might view it at a, at a partial strength, maybe somewhere around there. As I'm adjusting that slider, I'm watching the photo because <laughs> you've heard me say this a million times. The number on the slider doesn't matter. The look on the photo does. With the depth mask, that was very, very easy to create and um, natural too. Whereas something like Super Select, I could have picked all those pieces, but those would have been included in the mask at full strength. Here, once again, look at that view. I have a much more nuanced uh, selection here. It's similar to a luminosity mask in that you know certain parts are more masked than others this is a stronger mask this is a moderate mask this is no mask but i'm leveraging depth as opposed to luminance tones so that's an example of selecting something in a foreground and for this photo yeah sure uh, it, it's a, it's a very obvious selection right you know things were framed up all right, what about um, selecting the background? And maybe with a photo that uh, doesn't have that um, as obvious foreground, midground, background to it, at least with respect to depth of field and um, the, uh, you know, the, the, the way it might look to, uh, to our eyes. So uh, I'm going to show you another one here. So in this photo, you know, for our eyes, humans, we see foreground, we see midground, we see background. But when I captured this, you know, I'm I'm very far away. The camera is very far away from all of these things. You know, this is uh, this is out of Death Valley. You're standing on this overlook, Zabriskie Point, and you know, reaching in with uh, with a reasonably uh, good reach. I'm going to guess, you know, 100 to 150 millimeter at least. Uh, but let's do that foreground exercise again. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use bleach bypass to add some some punch to the foreground. So I'll open up my mask for bleach bypass. I'll hit that depth mask and I'll view it. And this is what the mask created. Now for this case, I, I want to, to have more of this affecting here. I mean, it correctly figured out this is closest, this is uh, you know next closest, and then all this stuff in the background. Like I said, the default will be targeting the foreground and, and bits of, uh, of the midground. But here I'll, I'll push the levels this direction now I'm picking up more of that midground, but what I'm watching right now, brightening up the, the you know, this this manly beacon here, that the, the landmass there, and then I'll take the window and I'll shrink the window. So now I'm I'm back to targeting just these pieces here. Let's turn off my view. And in this case, I'll probably use something like lighter, maybe bring that down a little bit. You know, adding a little bit of punch to that foreground before and after. Cool, great foreground. What about the background? Let's go through targeting the background, and I'll, I'll do this with a, with a different filter and using depth masks again to, to help us get there. 
So for the background, uh, let's uh, let's use a, a sunshine filter and just give it a little bit of, of softness there. And we can see what sunshine is doing to the background before and after. It's actually a really nice look overall. Uh, but I want to just target that in the background and have that just, just float out there. So uh, I already have my mask up here since I had the, uh, the properties window floating there. I'll hit depth mask and I'll turn on view. We know what it's going to do. When you're targeting the background, the quickest, simplest approach to get there to start with is invert the mask, right? If the default for depth mask is try to include in the mask things that are closest, invert it, you'll get the reverse. So the very first thing is invert the mask. Okay, now that background has got that nice bright white. I need to minimize the effect on the foreground. All right, and so once again, I'll start playing with sliders and I will work visually. I'll just start pushing things around. Okay, levels, I wanna go this way with it. Um, but then window, what's, what's, what's happening there? Window, I'm bringing that up. Levels is going down. Um, what is the, the far edge of the window? See that, I don't wanna do. That's bringing too much of it in. And this is how I'll work with the tool. Just kind of doing you know, the, uh, the adjustments here with the sliders working visually. And I'll have some of that uh, foreground gets some of that sunshine. I like the look uh, somewhat, but I just want it to be tapered off. And uh, if you want to, you can even add a little bit of a feathering in there. If I push it really far, you'll see the effect. But just to, you know, just to blend things together. If you don't want to do that, like here, you know, this is a nice crisp line. You can always use your other masking tools like the refine, the blur, all the other brushes we have. If you wanted to do a little smoothness on say this edge down here, you've got all of those things with your masks. You can add it to your depth mask after you're creating it. But then that's the, the end result. And so we have that mask and now before and after. Nice little sunshine pop in the background, right? But the, the foreground is, is keeping that, that crisp. And now I could even go back to my bleach bypass and say, hey, do I want a little more of that? Do I want a little more punch there? Do I want a little more contrast? You can, you can play, of course, like we, we always do with our sliders to figure out exactly where we want our photo to be. So that's an example of selecting a background, leveraging depth masks. Apply the depth mask, invert it, and then go and adjust those sliders. Let's do one more. This one will be mid-ground, and I'll switch to a, a photo of uh, some people uh, indoors just to give you a flavor that you can use depth masks on things besides landscapes. And mid-grounds become, uh, they become fun. They're, uh, they're, they become interesting selections, and it works really well. So uh, one more example here. In this example, uh, you can see I've done a bunch of adjustments to this, and one of the finishing touches I did with a local adjustment is just a little brightening on the, the, the two folks in the center here, you know, before and after. And that's a pretty coarse mask, right? That's, that's just, you know, a, uh, you know, a radial shape covering the general area just to draw attention there. What about using a depth mask instead to really get it to like more so those people and not necessarily everything around. So uh, let's try a depth mask here instead. So I'll work right here. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna adjust this adjustment. I, I like the settings I have, but you know, before I had depth masks, I just did something pretty basic. What about a depth mask? We'll hit that and here we go. I mean, this is already Look at, look how look how complex this is, right? It's figured out. You know, chairs are closer than you know the people, the next folks that are on our side of the bar, say, and there's the folks that are behind the bar. A bit of lights that get get caught up in there, but I want to target these two figures here. So let's just get started working visually, right? What are we gonna do? Okay, levels are gonna need to go that way. Window, that's pretty good. What about shrinking the foreground, pushing it really far? That window's getting really tight. That's pretty good right there. And now the levels can change how strong the mask is here in the midground. That's pretty good. Let's reduce that window even more. And this is where, let me push this down here. This is where having our extra masking capabilities is very useful. I've got the depth mask to have found the, the, the targets for me, these figures here. Well, I don't want a lot of the surrounding area. Uh, I can use other masking tools. I'll go up here, I'll get a gradient mask, 
and let me use an edges. So I'm going to mask away from the edges. Just click in here and I'm going to pull this down. So I'm still doing kind of the radial thing, but this is much more nuanced than it was previously. And even to finish that off, I'll grab my masking brush, make that brush a little bit bigger. And I don't need that part there, right? Um, I probably don't even need, well, I moved the photo there by mistake. I don't need that part there, just kind of give that away. A few clicks and I've got a pretty, pretty detailed mask there. Let's turn off that view. And now let's see the difference here, you know, before and after. Much more targeted. I like that it's still picking up the smoke. Let me uh, get back to a better pointer here. It's picking up the smoke there and everything. But that I like as, as, as much more um, direct with where I want the, the brightness to be, as opposed to having that broad thing, which was bleeding into the bar, the backs of the people that are, that are facing the other way, and leveraging a depth mask to do that. So there's a few examples of depth masks, how you can use them, and how it can help you target adjustments to areas that need selective treatment. It's really important for shaping your photo. And uh, I'm, I'm really, really, really enjoying depth masks in a photo raw. Uh, you got other questions about the tool, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.